We are constantly being told by environmentalists that nuclear power is bad, unsafe, and oh, what to do with the waste. Then in Germany, the country demolished the cooling towers at the Grafenheimfeld nuclear plant, which had been running since 1981. German environmental groups celebrated the destruction of a massive clean source of energy in what is Europe's dirtiest economy. But it got me thinking. If the Germans are right and nuclear power is so bad, then what could possibly be better? Could we replace those horribly inconvenient concrete domes with something much more soft, furry, and fun? And that's when I, a semi-respectable engineer, found a solution. We could put 100% organic and 100% adorable hamsters on wheels and have unlimited power. It's the perfect plan. All right, so if we want to replace a nuclear power plant with something much more environmental, like hamsters, then we have to figure a few things out first. Let's start with the basics. How much power does a typical nuclear reactor actually produce? These plants usually range between 700 and 1400 megawatts of electricity, but for simplicity, let's just go with 1000 megawatts or one gigawatt, which is enough to power about half a million homes. So if we want to replace that with hamsters, just how many of these little furballs are we going to need? Well, according to an unsighted Wikipedia source, a hamster running on a wheel generates about half a watt of power. That's just enough power to light a tiny LED light. So to generate the same amount of electricity as a nuclear plant, we're going to need a lot of hamsters. How many exactly? To get one gigawatt or one billion watts of power, and each hamster produces half a watt, then we're going to need two billion hamsters. Yes, two billion hamsters running nonstop on wheels would give us the power we need to replace that nuclear plant. But let's not stop there. In the interest of complete environmental justice, we have a few other things we need to figure out. What about the cost? Are two billion hamsters safer than a nuclear plant? And what about the, um, uh, <clears throat> the waste? These are serious questions I, your responsible engineer, will answer. Because replacing a nuclear plant with something else, like hamsters, is a big challenge. But you know what else is tough? Getting your point across so that other people will listen. Whether you're discussing energy or any other topic, effective communication will get you far in life and in your career. And you can do that with this video's sponsor, Imprint. Imprint is an app that's quick, convenient, and visual. It's the best way to learn with a beautifully illustrated and animated experience that keeps your mind engaged and be sure to retain the information long after. It's super quick. Most of their lessons take just two minutes or less to complete, summarizing knowledge from all kinds of topics that you can literally do while waiting for an elevator or grabbing a coffee. There's a huge library of content on everything from finance and business to psychology, leadership, and science. Imprint's so good, it won Google's App of the Year in 2023. I've been doing the Interpersonal Dynamics course, which explores how we connect and interact with people around us, and it's been really eye-opening. So if you're ready to get your mind and yourself ahead, check out Imprint at imprintapp.com atomic or using the link down in the description. You'll get a seven day free trial. Plus, as fans of this channel, an extra 20% off the annual premium plan if you choose to sign up. So check it out at imprintapp.com atomic. All right, first things first, how much is this hamster power scheme going to cost us up front? PetSmart lists hamsters for sale at $22.99 each, but assuming we qualify for a bulk discount, Let's say we can get each hamster for $10. But we can't just let them run wild, right? We'll need cages, wheels, generators, and all the necessary connections. So adding it all up, each hamster setup costs about $60. Multiply that by our 2 billion hamsters, and we're looking at a cool $120 billion. But hey, maybe we can get a discount on all the equipment, so let's just call it an even 100 billion. How does that compare to nuclear? Well, the two new units at the Vogel plant in Georgia, which are some of the most expensive in the world, cost around $34 billion to build. That's $17 billion per one gigawatt plant. So in terms of construction, our hamster solution is starting off a bit pricey. Now that we've spent $100 billion on 2 billion hamsters, let's talk about what it takes to keep this furry workforce running. Because they're on wheels. Get it? Okay. First up, space. According to the dimensions on Amazon, each hamster cage takes up about two cubic feet. So for all two billion hamsters, we need about four billion cubic feet of space. But we can't just cram them all in like sardines in a can. To give some room and so we can move around the cages, we'll pack them in at only 75% density, which bumps us up to 5.3 billion cubic feet, or roughly 150 million cubic meters. To put that into perspective, one World Trade Center in New York City contains 39,433,333 cubic feet of space. So we need 135 World Trade Center towers just to house all these hamsters. 
But it doesn't stop there. Each hamster needs care. Food, toys, vet visits, at around $400 a year. So that comes out to $800 billion. Plus, we'll need people to care and feed for our hamsters every day. If we hire staff, and each person is responsible for 1,000 hamsters each, we'll need 2 million human caretakers. But congratulations, we've just created 2 million jobs. At, say, $50,000 a year per caretaker, that adds up to $100 billion a year in salaries. In total, the annual cost of feeding, caring for, and maintaining our hamsters comes to $900 billion. That's right, $900 billion every single year. Speaking of food, each hamster adorably eats 15 grams of pellets a day, or 5,475 grams a year. That means feeding our 2 billion hamsters requires 10.95 million tons of food annually. To put that in perspective, the entire state of Kansas produced about 200 million bushels, or 5.4 million tons, of wheat in 2023. So to feed our hamster power army, we need just over two Kansas's worth of wheat every year. Now, what you can do to help the poor people of Kansas, since they're soon to be starving, is to like this video. Each like on this video spreads the word about the dangers of shutting down nuclear plants and replacing them with billions of hamsters. So do your part and save the poor people of Kansas and hit the like button now. Now, let's compare these costs to a typical nuclear plant. The operating cost for an average 1,000 megawatt nuclear plant in the U.S. is about $27 per megawatt hour. A nuclear plant of that size also needs only around 500 workers, a tiny fraction of what we need for our hamster army. Over the course of the year, that totals to $8.8 .8 billion for fuel, maintenance, and staffing. Plus, these plants don't need nearly as much space. Just a few acres of land are enough to house the entire facility, and it generates power 24-7 without needing food, toys, or vet care. Now, let's talk about the long-term costs of our hamster-powered energy dream. And unfortunately, this is where things get dark. Hamsters don't live very long, just two to three years. But since we're making them run on wheels 24-7, let's be honest, they're not going to make it to retirement. That means we're going to have to replace all two billion hamsters every year. At $10 a hamster, that's another $20 billion a year just to keep the wheels turning. Meanwhile, the nuclear plant is designed to run for decades, and some experts even speculate that with proper maintenance, these plants could operate for a century. That might sound far-fetched, but think about this. The Hoover Dam has been running strong for over 90 years, and the U.S. Air Force plans to keep its B-52 bombers in service until at least 2050. Why? Because when you take good care of well-built machines, they can run almost forever. So while we're constantly replacing hamsters, a nuclear plant just keeps on going, providing reliable power with a lot fewer headaches. Now, besides the cruelty of stacking 2 billion hamsters floor to ceiling in 135 World Trade Center towers, we also need to think about safety and disease. The most common injury for humans dealing with hamsters are bites, which risk becoming infected. There aren't good statistics on hamster bites, but let's assume that 1% of our 2 million staff suffer a bite each week. That's 20,000 bites a week, and over a million a year. Around 10% of these bites might get infected, and if left untreated, could be deadly. And if someone's allergic, a bite could trigger anaphylaxis, a potentially fatal reaction that stops breathing. But that's not all. Hamsters, like other rodents, carry diseases. One of them is lymphocytic choreomeningitis, a virus that, while rare, can be deadly. In a situation where we have two billion exhausted hamsters tightly packed together, we're bound to see thousands of human injuries, and even deaths every year. Now, let's compare this to the safety record of nuclear plants. According to the U.S. Health and Safety Organization, OSHA, the nuclear industry has an injury rate of just 0.3 per 100 workers per year. For our 500 staff at the nuclear plant, that means an average of one person might get injured and need time off work in a year, usually from slips, trips, or falls. But what about big accidents, you say? Like the ones on the news? In the U.S., there hasn't been a significant nuclear accident in 45 years, since Three Mile Island, and none that resulted in significant radiation exposure to the public or permanent loss of land. In fact, I would argue that because of this, incidents like Three Mile Island and even Fukushima have shown how robust and resilient nuclear plants are at protecting the public, even in the face of unexpected challenges. Finally, let's tackle the issue of waste. If you've ever had to clean out a hamster cage, you know there's going to be some unpleasantness. Now, imagine dealing with that on a massive scale, because with two billion hamsters, we're going to be dealing with literally a mountain of poo. If each hamster produces 10 grams of waste per day, and let's be honest, they're working pretty hard, so they've earned it, 
That adds up to 20 million kilograms of waste per day, or 7.3 million tons per year. That's the same as a small city. On the other hand, a nuclear power plant produces around just 20 tons of used fuel each year. Yes, nuclear waste is highly radioactive and requires careful handling, but the sheer volume is far more manageable. In fact, here's what 20 years worth of spent nuclear fuel looks like, stored safely in what is essentially a secured parking lot. And with recycling or the development of advanced reactors, we could reduce that even further. So after considering all of the factors, cost, safety, waste, our dream of replacing a nuclear plant with two billion hamsters might not be as practical as it first seemed. Sure, it'd be fun to live in a world powered by cute furry creatures running on wheels, but when you break down the logistics, it's clear that no energy source is perfect. Every option, whether it's hamsters, wind, solar, or nuclear, comes with its own set of challenges. We need to approach our energy choices with a balance of practicality and sustainability in mind. So the next time somebody tells you that nuclear power is bad, just remember this. Energy isn't about picking the most fun or popular choice. It's about finding the right balance for a cleaner, safer, and more reliable future. And remember to check out Imprint at imprintapp.com atomic using the link in the description to get a seven day free trial plus an extra 20% off the annual premium plan if you choose to sign up. So check it out at imprintapp.com atomic. But if while we still have nuclear reactors and you want to see what we do with the waste, then you should check out this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, oh no.